Hello. Um, I just want to say welcome back. <laughs> Thank you for all the love and support on my last video. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Still very much learning. Okay, sorry. Let me turn this off. Learning about you know the YouTube platform, how to edit, and everything like that. Learning the camera settings to like the lighting. So sorry if I seem a little washed out in some parts. I'm I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. Um, but anyway. As you can probably tell from the title, this is gonna kickstart the whole series about my breast augmentation. I'm really excited. I'm gonna try to get into like the nitty gritty of things within these few videos. So the first video I figured I could do like a story time, kind of just tell you about my experience traveling to where I did to get them done. Um, and then the next one probably go into like pros and cons of having the breast augmentation and maybe answering questions that you guys leave down below this video. And then I was thinking for the third video, have my mom actually come on here and share a little bit about her story and how she like found the surgeons and everything like that. So I just want to put out like a little disclaimer first, everything that I talk about in this video and the following videos after. Um, it's all for educational purposes, obviously. I remember when I was looking into getting mine done, I really appreciated these videos on YouTube that I could go to and listen to people's experience like firsthand. So I'm excited to finally share with you. And also a big reason why I decided to wait to kind of go into this is the fact that I did go out of the country to get mine done, not far. I went to Tijuana, Mexico. There's a lot to unpack. So I'd grab your popcorn, your drinks. Let's just jump right into it. From a very young age, I knew that I wanted to get my boobies done, okay? I remember just like looking down and not being very comfortable with what I saw, looking in the mirror and just feeling very insecure about what I look like. I just wanna say all love to all the boobs out there, okay? No matter the shape, the size, I think all boobies are beautiful, okay? But I don't know what it was. Whenever I looked at my own, I just was not happy. Like, and I have never been, I've never been comfortable. It trickled into other things like, you know, when you finally start being intimate with your partners and stuff like that, it, it just like affected me in a lot of areas. So that is why I just knew that it was something that I wanted to get done. I was an A cup, right? But I used to joke around and say it was like a negative A because I could look down and see like a gap between my bra and like my boob, you know what I mean? So yeah, she definitely was a part of the itty bitty titty committee. Um, matter of fact, one could argue that she was like, you know, CEO. They, they were cute. I look back at pictures now and I'm like, okay, it was a cute chest. Like, and that's why I say all love to all boobies, okay? So yeah, I traveled to Tijuana to this surgeon called Body Art Surgical. And my mom actually found him way before I even went. They created like a pretty good relationship over the years, um, ever since he worked on her body and she would like refer people to him and everything like that. After her surgeries, going with friends to get stuff done, she would always mention that I would be there at some point soon to get mine. So yeah, very grateful for my mom. She's the whole reason why it got kickstarted so fast. Let's kind of start the timeline uh, in July of 2021. That is when my mom really kind of kickstarted the idea because I had recently graduated from college and she was like, Hannah, it's something you always wanted to get done. Let's go. I could get Botox. Haley can get lipo on her neck. Um, Haley is my sister, by the way. Um, so yeah we basically was able to book a date obviously their procedures like lipo botox those are like minor things mine was like an actual surgery surgery so this doctor has grown a lot since my mom went and first saw him so he was booked out like for a while and luckily again i think because of the connection he squeezed me in he squeezed me in on a friday i believe it was like 5 p.m september 10th of that same year so that was the scheduled date we booked our flights flew out of cbg which is like the airport near us on september 10th landed in san diego um mind you when it comes to these surgeries where you travel out of the country there's typically coordinators involved where they make sure you get a ride to and from like where you need to be when my mom comes on here eventually she'll go more in depth into that because she was the main one talking to the coordinators and stuff like that so i don't have like all the information on that so i'll have to wait again for that specific thing but eventually uh we landed in san diego super late okay we're gonna we're gonna pause real fast sorry this is literally try okay i don't know if you're like this but like when you're trying to tell a story 
you like jump around. It's really hard. Like I even try to make notes to make sure I don't do that, but I'm gonna end up doing that, so sorry. So pause right there. We landed in San, San Diego, okay? So going back to my mom's whole situation, because like I said, she has been to this doctor before. One of the times that she went to Mexico, the very first time actually was to have weight loss surgery. And that was because she always kind of struggled with losing weight and keeping the weight off after having four kids. I actually went with her to get the sleeve done, but I did not go with her to get like the plastic surgery done. And I believe they were done by two different doctors. So yeah, when I went with her the first time, we actually met this guy who drove us around Mexico and all that stuff. His name was Junior. It literally was so funny. The vibes were just there. But yeah, I just wanted to say that because it wasn't him, but it was like someone that he worked with. So we still felt comfortable. Um, it might have even been his wife or girlfriend. I'm, I'm, I can't remember. Um, but anyway, so uh, she drove us across the border, which was pretty smooth sailing. So that was that was good. She took us straight to our hotel and we didn't really get to see much because again it was so late we were so tired from flying all day so we went straight to our room this was our view um it was actually really nice like i love this this is a picture that i took beforehand too looking back at pictures now like it wasn't that bad but yeah i'm very i'm very grateful that i got them done like they were like cones to be honest and i hated it i would look down like i would be like leaned over and they would literally be like this like you know how madonna like sometimes would wear like those outfits with this pointy boobs like that's literally what my boobs look like they're little traffic cones just sitting pointed out all the time so yeah the next morning we actually got to see the hotel in daylight and it was actually so nice like and everyone there was so nice um it was very modern and just like chic i'll put the name somewhere i can't remember off the top of my head but yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful place to stay at. And across the street, they had at Starbucks, um, which of course my mom hit up, she loves Starbucks. But what sucked is because they were having minor procedures, they could go about their day without really worrying about anything. But because I was undergoing major surgery, I couldn't eat that whole day. So that was rough. You know, we all went to the Starbucks and they came and sat down at the table. I just had my water, my water. I don't even know if I was allowed to drink water, to be honest, but they sat down with like their hot chocolate and special drinks. And I just sat there with my mouth watering because I was like, oh my gosh. After that, we took a little walk to a little grocery store that was around there. If you have OCD, you would love a store like this because I swear everything was on the shelves, like almost perfect to the T. The labels and stuff were all turned perfectly towards you. Like it was literally, it did something to my soul. And I don't even have OCD. So we also walked around a mall that was nearby too. It was just a neat experience to see like what the shops were like over there and everything like that. So once we got back to the hotel, I believe we napped for a little bit too, uh, but this is another before picture that I shot. Uh, I actually changed out of those clothes to something that was easier to take on and off, which was this little set here. There's Haley, she was ready to go. Mind you, this was during COVID times, right? So I knew from the get-go that we were gonna be together up until the point where I had to go back for surgery because they didn't allow like you to have any visitors. Eventually the lady came and picked us up, I believe around like 12.30 uh, that day. I knew again, my surgery wasn't until five. We eventually arrived to the hospital. This is what the outside looks like, pretty, pretty neat. And then this is what the lobby looked like. We sat there for like a good two or three hours just like waiting for our turn slash getting paperwork done slash paying. Those big glass doors were the doors that I was going to go in for my surgery. But if you can imagine like a wall on the right hand side, there was like three doors, three rooms on that wall. And those I believe are the rooms where they do like the minor procedures. Um, my sister went back into one of those and my mom for like the Botox and like the, the, the lipo on the neck. They eventually called me back and I went back there by my loneliness self. Through those doors, off to the right, there was like a room where they asked me to get into the gown and like put the like hair net thing on, the compression socks, the shoes. Although I was nervous, I was very excited at this point. I remember, I believe a lady came in at one point for me to fill out some more paperwork, which was a little scary. Cause again, I was like by myself. Like, Hello, mom. Like, so I was calling her every two minutes. It felt like to make sure, do I sign this? Is it okay to check this off, you know? 
And then after that, a nurse came in and he put the IV in my hand, which wasn't like bad. It looks very gross looking back at it now. Again, this whole time I have never met the doctor like face to face. He just knew of me because of my mom and I knew of him because of my mom. Um, we did end up sending him pictures prior to of like my chest, like bare chest, so he can know like what he's working with. Eventually he came into that room as well. We exchanged our hellos. Um, he had me stand up take off my gown so he can take a look at everything. He had me stand like this so that way, you know, he can draw and kind of see what we're working with. He was asking me what I wanted. I was like, yeah, I want something kind of natural, you know, nothing like too much. Again, cause I was like an A cup previously, I had envisioned like a C cup. So he was like, no, I think that would be perfect. I think that would fit your body nicely. I was like, yes. He was like, okay, how far apart do you want them? I was like, what? <laughs> we have the option for that? I was like, literally do whatever you think will make it look the most natural. And he obviously disclosed like they're fake, so they're not gonna look like, you know, but like I already understood that. So after he got finished drawing on me, he took some pictures. He was like, okay, are you excited? I was like, yeah. He was like, okay, well, I'm gonna have um, some other nurses take you to your room. I was like, all right, great. So I gathered all my things. Those nurses came, took me into my official room. I had my own bathroom, my own TV, all that jazz. I really appreciated the fact that the, the TVs themselves were hooked up to Netflix and stuff already. Like I didn't have to sign into them. So best believe I started watching Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> and I know for a fact that my surgery started kind of later because I was able to get halfway through this movie. But again, I did not mind because I was just so grateful that he squeezed me in. Eventually, I hear a little knock at the door as I'm halfway through my movie and they're there with the wheelchair to wheel me on back. So I get in, they take me down this long hallway, the hallway ends and like off to the right there's like three or four surgery like rooms, like operating rooms and I could tell because they have the, those big silver like push doors with like the windows and stuff. They were actually operating on someone in the first room. And when I saw that, that's when it really started to kick in. Like, oh my God, I'm about to like undergo major surgery for the first time. Um, and they wheeled me to the second room. So when they opened up the doors, there was like five or six nurses, all ladies, I believe. They were getting the room ready. I was like, oh my God, this is actually happening. And, but yeah, so they had me get up from the wheelchair and like kind of sit on the table. And then it dawned on me, listen, with all the research that I've done, I learned that in order to get like a more natural look as well, it's better to get the implants underneath the muscle. Um, so that way they're not just like sitting right on top. So I realized we never talked about that during our little conversation, right? And I didn't want to bother, but I'm like, no, like this is about to be on my body permanently. I asked one of the nurses, I was like, hi, I forgot to mention something to the doctor. Can I talk to him? Is there any way I could talk to him? They're like, oh yeah, that's fine. So they went to that first room connecting door between both like rooms, like operating rooms. And so eventually this woman came out and I believe she was like his assistant or something like that. She was like wrapped up and she was like, is everything okay? I was like, no, yeah, I just forgot to mention to Dr. Rodriguez that I wanted them underneath my muscle. And and like I started to kind of ramble on. She looks at me and goes, she was like, oh honey, don't worry about it. Yeah, you don't have enough skin anyway for us to put it on top. We have to put it underneath. I was like, oh, oh, right, right, okay, thank you. All right. She was like, okay, are you all right? I was like, yeah. She walks out, I like kind of focus back on the room around me and everyone's still doing their thing. And I'm like, okay, go ahead and lay on back. And it's literally like the movies, okay? I have like the IV bag near you. When you're looking up, there's like the lights and everything, the, the computer monitor, um, just people moving all around you. I was like, dang, this literally feels like I'm in Grey's Anatomy. Then something happens, it takes a turn, okay, as I'm laying there on this table. Everyone that I love, like a picture of them just kind of pops in my mind. It was like a very fast slideshow. And like the thought just kind of hits me because obviously there's risk with any surgery that you get done, no matter what. Some people go under anesthesia for the most like random kind of small little thing and don't wake up. Like you just never know. I actually like questioned in that moment, me laying here on this table like this in this situation, is it worth it for me to just have implants, you know? It kind of hit me. I was like, what if I never see my loved ones again what if i never see my family what if i never see my mom my dad um uh, penny i started to like bat away the tears because i started to get like emotional about it you know and i think one of the nurses saw she came over to me she's like hey she's like it's okay i know it's a big thing go ahead and let it out like it's okay to cry it's a really exciting thing like little did she know i was having like an internal like crises here I just laid there and like big crocodile tears were just like falling from my face. I felt like another hand on this side. After that, I felt like a wave of comfort kind of wash over me. Um, and I was able to like kind of ground myself a little bit. Obviously we'll see what happens. 
Um, but just like be in the moment, calm down so they can do their job. They came over and they were like, oh, are you all right? I was like, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. And then they were like, okay, we're gonna start the anesthesia. I was like, okay. So I vaguely remember that thing coming over my face, but I remember I looked around at one, like one more time and just like tried to thank everyone in that room for being with me during that moment. It was just like a lot of emotions fast, like excitement, happiness, sadness, like worry. I believe at one point music came on too, but again, things got real fuzzy, like real fast. And I don't remember like a whole lot after that. After that, I woke up in like their little ICU room. I remember I didn't obviously get a picture of that because I didn't have my phone, but it was like a decent sized room with like beds lined up on both sides of the wall you know but I was like the only one in there and there was a nurse to like my left hand side on her computer she asked if I was okay kind of like notice when I was doing one of these trying to figure out where the hell I was I'm okay and I um, remember looking down and I was like I have boobies like I really have boobies like that's crazy I love this lipstick but I don't like how it after kind of realizing that the surgery was done, I was very much alive. I was still like in and out while I was in the ICU. I didn't even know how I got back to my original room. And I remember looking at my phone. It was like 12 in the morning and like texting everyone, letting them know that I was okay and I was back in my room. I was still very much numb. The only thing I felt there was like tightness. And I realized that I was like starving. I was, I was so hungry. At one point, one of the nurses came in and I asked for like something to eat. And she brought me back some soup, which was so nice. You're not supposed to like really use any of your arm or like chest muscles after you first get it done. And I remember at one point I had to use the restroom and I tried to get up by myself and I hurt like a bit. I believe around eight in the morning, they came around with breakfast. I had a nice little smoothie. I believe it was like peanut butter toast, um, jelly. I think there was something else. I just can't remember finished watching my movie and they had an option for me to go to like this recovery house but typically with breast augmentation it's like kind of like an outpatient thing like you're just there kind of overnight this part you can leave like pretty soon after yeah my mom came and got me i believe this was around like 12. yeah my mom my mom took this photo <laughs> but yeah the car ride home was actually really funny because you know Driving is crazy, potholes were like out of this world. <laughs> Every time I look over, I see my sister kind of wrapped up in this concoction, which was so freaking funny. It did, it did hurt to laugh in like a funny way. After we got there, I remember, I believe we just relaxed for a little bit until we went downstairs for dinner. After that, we went back up to our room, went to sleep, and then woke up super, super early because again, we landed in San Diego and drove across the border, so we were doing the same thing back. The earlier you wake up and go to cross, the better because the line gets really long with everyone who like goes into the states to work and stuff like that we got up really early i didn't even feel alive to be honest i'm pretty sure the boobs were still like numb feeling i don't think they started to hurt until after we took off from the san diego airport landed in denver for a long time again because we had a long layover that's when i felt like the pain started to kick in but the doctors provided me with like pain medication which i was able to cross the border with and you know get on the plane with no questions asked obviously they give you like a little paper in case i think but i remember taking meds for the first time there after sitting there for like a few hours and we decided to change my dressing because you're not supposed to change it for a little bit after getting it done so we went to the bathroom my mom's a nurse you know what i mean so that's another reason why i didn't stay in like the inpatient thing she helped clean my dressing put the thing on was able to make sure like nothing looked out of the ordinary mind you this whole time i have not had the chance to actually look at them to look at the finished product because they were wrapped up and you know so not even here at the airport did i get a good chance to look at him i could tell that one was up higher than the other and i was very concerned i remember mama why are they like uneven like why is one higher than the other and she kind of just reaffirmed me that don't worry about it like they're both gonna drop anyway even if one's up a little higher like they they will fall it'll be fine Obviously that echoed in my mind and I did not think that they were gonna be fine. I was actually genuinely concerned. We finally got back to Cincinnati. It was super, super late. Yeah, so that night when I got home, I actually took a shower in which I was able to look at them for the first time in the mirror. That was a little scary because again, they were lopsided. It freaked me out. It looked so weird. It looked so unnatural. They were up so high. I was able to finally look at my incisions too. They're probably like around here. They're probably like an inch and a half to two inches. After you get a surgery like this, you're not allowed to sleep laying down. And I would sleep in this chair that had like a ottoman to put my feet up, you know? I would sit there, kind of lean back, and then use my airport pillow and like sleep like this. And that's just how I how I did it for like the first like two, three weeks, I think. And then after those two weeks, I went to the couch where 
I started with like five pillows behind me and then every week I would like go back, go back, go back, you know? So as far as like this garment goes that I wore, this one was provided alongside like the surgery price, which, oh my gosh, I didn't even mention. Again, because my mom like referred so many people to this to this doctor, when it was finally my turn, he offered us a discount, um, which we paid 3,500. 3,500 for both. I think my sister's lipo was like 500 or something and then my mom's Botox, I'm gonna have to ask her how much that was. But yeah, this was included in the surgery price. So doctors, yeah, typically recommend that you wear it anywhere from like two weeks after surgery to like a month. I believe I wore mine up to like two months after because the compression helps with the swelling and everything. It just feels better. I'm trying to remember like major things. Every time that the pain medication wore off, Specifically that first week, I would just take more meds. During that time, as you're healing, the nerves start to connect again and, and it, it, it does get a bit painful sometimes. I wanna say probably after like the two and a half to three week mark would sometimes find myself like forgetting that they're even there, which is really good. We were becoming one, you know, the implants in me, you know? It took me probably like a good two months to finally lay flat. Only thing is I'm a belly sleeper and you can't really sleep on your belly after that. So that is a con that I will be listing again in the next video. But after like the two month mark is I think when I finally decided not to wear this as much and start wearing like the bras that are kind of like sports bras, you know what I mean? And I think it wasn't until January slash February is when I went to go like actually try on some bras because again, you're just still healing. I remember like going to Victoria's Secret and again, I wanted to see and they measured me as a D cup, which obviously I think every place is kind of different, but I was like, oh, I'm a D, no way. But I'll never forget, like I, I went, I put the bra on and to actually have my boob fill the cup and for them to look like that, but because they were still high and like settling, you could very much tell that they were fake, you know what I mean? And that summer too, I was able to like put on a bikini for the first time and fill it out. I, I, I will never forget that feeling. But yeah, um, within those first few months, nothing really happened. Oh, actually, yes, I did. Okay, so you know how sometimes cars have little bicycle thingies, like holders in the back, right? So I freaking was walking to a restaurant from a parking lot, right? ran smack dab with my boobs into one of those because it was sticking out and there was no bike so i really didn't see it until i freaking ran into it i literally didn't breathe for like a hot minute because i was like like it hurt so bad I genuinely thought i might have popped the boob because it hurt so bad and so i remember i went to the restroom after like finding our seat in the restaurant it bruised it bruised i had a line right here within a matter of minutes it was crazy but yeah there was no no rupture thank goodness you gotta be cautious. Here's a little lineup. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. A little lineup of what um, they look like in the different stages. So my before um, at the hospital, that third picture, um, one boob was still very much higher. You just couldn't tell. Again, I didn't take too many pictures at that time because I knew that they were still settling and I still was concerned at that point. But the last picture is one that I took on my birthday actually of uh, this year. So almost two two years out, they are even, they are beautiful. They have definitely fluffed. If you don't know what fluff means, when the implant drops and it, they get softer. Um, so yeah, I definitely love the way they look now. They, I feel like they fit my body so nicely. They're not too big, not too small. I left with this little thingy, but with this little card. Um, so I got 350 cc's in both. The type is the round silk surface plus. So that's what the little card looks like. There's like little writing. Let me do the little YouTube thing. Focus, focus. But yeah, I hope that was easy to follow. I hope I touched base on everything enough, especially the recovery part. If you have any questions, definitely drop them down below. I will try to answer them in the next video or even in the comments. And I think my next video is gonna be a closet tour actually, like explain how I organize and keep all my clothes. And then the next video will be like another video towards this series. So I'm trying to break it up a little bit, you know? I just wanna say thank you and I love you and until next time. Until next time. time. Hey man. Or go get replaced, or go get a pop, or or go get a popped, a boob, or go get a pop, a popped. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on.